This tutorial will show you then how scan F works with floating point numbers. We're going to start with a float and then we'll work with a double. So the specifier that we need for a float is an F. You can use other specifiers, E for exponential. G will actually just uh, work with either exponential or regular floating point. We won't talk about A. All we're going to talk about here is F. We commonly use F. So what then will scanf extract from the standard input stream, your keyboard? Right? A series of decimal digits, optionally containing a decimal point, optionally preceded by a plus sign or a minus sign, and optionally followed by the character little E or capital E. It will also read a decimal integer as well. So let's work then with our float. I'm going to, let's escape out of here. Let's bring up code blocks. And I've got this first code blocks example. All right, scanf is defined in the st standard library, right? Standard input output library as well as printf. So I've included then this header file. We need that in order to use those functions. Right. I've declared a variable. Its data type is float, right? The variable's name is x. And I went ahead and stored in, in a, a constant value of one. Now, if I just type 1.0 there, by default, the data type of this literal here, this constant, is a double. Right? If I put the small case f after it, it says to make that a float. Very tiny distinction here. Really not a now, something beginning programmers usually don't worry about, but let's, let's think about the data types and let's start learning this as we go along. Right? It will help you later. First thing we're going to do then is we're going to print out a message saying before calling scanf, x is, and we use percent %f then, as we learned with printf, to display floats. We're going to print out then the value of x. This percent %f is a placeholder for this expression here, right, which should be the number one. We'll see that print out. Then we're going to prompt the user to enter the value of x. Scanf then will read the value of x and store it next, and then we'll print it back out. All right, let's just build and run. All right, so we can see that before calling scanf, x is one. Right now, it just said that we could enter a number with an optional plus or minus sign. All right, just going to look for a floating point number. Let's just start with something simple like 1.23. Right, that should match the pattern that scanf is looking for. I'm going to hit the enter key. We can see then that we get the number 1.23 was stored in X. Remember the default behavior of printf is to show us six decimal places, right? If we don't control that, so that's why we see the six there. All right, let's maybe put a new line there so we get a little, we can see the output a little bit better. All right, now build and run. I had to rebuild because I made a change in the program with that optional, with that extra blank line. All right. So optional plus sign. So I can type 1 plus 1.23. Right, we get 1.23. Optional negative sign. Right. Then minus 1.23. All right, all of those work. And all right, let's run again. I'm just going to now type, we don't have to start things with an integer. I could just type 0.23. And then we see it read the 0.23. All right. So I hit the F8, we got a slightly different view when I ran. Let's run as we normally do with function F9. All right. And I could also type the leading zero, 0 0.23. That works as well. And so you can try various combinations. Let's make let's make this uh, fail now, or not quite fail. What if I type 1.23.456? Right. Well, the way it pattern matches, right? It said it saw the first digit one, so that's valid. The first decimal point is valid, right? These digits are valid. So all the way through point one, 1 
that is a valid floating point number. But when it sees the next period or decimal point there, it says, nope, I'm done reading digits. I'm going to store what I've read so far in the variable, write the address of x, so we get 1.23. Technically, the 0.456 is still out in the standard input stream waiting to be read. It has not been removed. So that gives you an idea then of how the pattern matching works with floats. Similarly, the way we do with decimals, I, we could try to read in another float. Right, so I'm just doing this to store the value of one in here so we know what the good value is, or sorry, what we know, we know that there is a value stored in memory before we start. Right, we could print that out as well. Y is percent F. We need to add the argument y here. And now I could say enter x and y. I can put two of these here. Right. And then I have to say, okay, the address of y. Right. We have to tell it where to store that. And then here, let's print out what we have when we're done. So y percent. F and let's build and run that. All right, so we can see X and Y both have values of one, right? Let me type that 1.23. I'm gonna give a space 4.5678, right? Slightly longer number here. All right, so it read in the 1.23, right? The space then cause scan F to stop reading, store that in X, then it starts here. It reads 4.56789455. It should have read all that in, right? But remember, we get the six decimal places by default, so we don't see this information at the end. And you can notice in this case, the four did not round. We have a four five. Scan F, or sorry, floating points don't automatically round. It has to do with the way they're stored in memory. Right. You have to call a rounding function if you want to guarantee that they will round. All right. So there's an example then of how we were able to put two conversion specifiers in the scan app string. Right. And we can also show it fail as well too. So let's enter a good value for x, 1.23 space. And now I'm going to say a. 4.56. The A is not a numeric character, right? We got the 1.23 stored in X. The A caused scan F to fail because it was looking for a digit. It didn't get a digit, so it just stopped. So we should still have the A 4.56 out on the input stream waiting to be read. You can see that Y has the default value that we initialized it with. So like I said, in our class, in the beginning as a programmer, until you learn methods of error checking, the best we can do is assume that the user will correctly type in input. We can do these examples to see that how scanf works, because we need to learn how scanf can work in order to correctly check for errors later. All right, what happens if I put a space in between these two percent Fs? All right, let's build and run this again. All right, so 1.23. Space 4.56, no, 4.6, I forgot the 5. Okay, that still works. Right? I can have the space in there between the two, right? Because I have to put space here, and it matches that pattern there. Okay. So that space there doesn't hurt. What happens if I put a space after the last percent F? Let's build and run. Okay, here's my 1.23 space, 4.56, hit the enter key, huh, and my program just sits there. So what was the change we made? The change we made was we put a space after this last argument. Scanf doesn't like that very well. I'm hitting the enter key, you can notice the cursor just going down, Scanf is not happy. So if I just type something else, any other character, hit the enter key, then Scanf returns. The one thing you never want to do is you never want to put a space right here at the end of 
this list or you get this sort of behavior well scan f is going to sit there and wait for some other character that it can read in some character other than the enter key all right so i just wanted to show you that behavior because sometimes you can accidentally type a space right in most cases in c it doesn't matter where we put spaces but in this case it does this space becomes problematic we remove it to go back to where we were. All right, this pops up. I can now do my 1.23 space 4.56 enter and it works. All right, that's it for floats. Let's talk about how to work with a double. Well, I am going to now change the data type of both these variables to double. All right, we'll see their values. Let's just work on entering one now at this point we could leave the two in there but let's just work with one right it's always good to work with a simple case all right so here's what we did i changed the data type of x and y to double and i want to print them out so i'm using percent f we did that with flows with doubles we use percent f with print f print f is a little bit strange it actually We'll promote anything that's floating point to a double. So we always use percent %f to, with printf for floats and doubles. Right. So let's put it in a comment. Use, so two lines make a comment, three lines as well for a plugin that I have with this. But use percent %f, actually, so printf uses percent f for both float and double. What I want to do is I want to compile, build compile. And what I want you to see is this message pops up. Warning, format percent f expects argument of type float star. Well, that means the address of a floating point type. But argument two has type double star. So here, this is argument two, so right here, this is the first argument to scan out. This is the second argument. So when it says argument one, right? This argument here, this says I'm expecting a float. But this says it's a double. This is argument two. For doubles with scan F, we have to use LF. So that's the letter L, right? Scan F uses percent LF for double, percent F for float. So that's something that's a little bit different between the floats and the doubles, and it just relates to scan F. You've got to use an LF for a double there. All right. Once again, print F uses percent F to print them out. It's one of the few inconsistencies with C, because pretty much printf and scanf work a lot alike, but the, that's a difference in the specifiers. All right, so now I can type something in for X. I can do my 1.23 again, so 1.23 enter key. All right, we store that in X, because the pattern matching for the doubles is the same. A double just simply uses more memory right, when it stores its data. And that's part of the reason you have to use the LF is the fact that it needs to be able to access, ScanF needs to access the right amount of memory. We, ScanF requires the LF to get the right amount of memory for a double. PrintF does a rather strange thing in terms of whether, you, or whether your data is a float or a double, it will just promote everything to doubles automatically when it prints. Uh, there's, a discussion about it here. Right. Uh, let me go here. There's a discussion on stack overflow. Why does scanf need percent %LF for doubles when printf is okay with just percent %F? Now, if you don't know about pointers and addresses, this discussion is likely over your head. Later, when you learn a little bit more, when you learn about pointers, uh, it will make a, it will make hopefully more sense to you, right? But it's there if you want to pursue it, right? 
All right. All right, so now we've seen how to use both doubles and floats within here. We can have multiple double arguments in here, right? If we wanted to read in here, a double for y as well. So if I go over the address of y, and I say enter x and y here to let the user know to enter two things. I, I had to make that an LF and scanf. L is in the letter L, All right? My 1.23 works here. I can do a minus 4.56, right? And those are successfully read into X and F, right? Scan F will fail in the same way with doubles as it does with floats and ints, right? If I run now, if I were to type, oh, turtle, I like the word turtle, and maybe followed by 1.23 and then 4.56. That first T is going to make scanf fail. It fails to read anything in. It can't. Pro it's that's not part of a legal floating point number. So it simply does not store anything in X. It does not try to. It doesn't remove anything and try to. It doesn't try to read any of this and change the contents of Y. Once scanf can't read anything, it the function simply returns. Right. That's our lesson then. Thanks for watching.